So you really want to try out that brand new Major Beta Flight 4.0 feature, the RPM notch filter, the pinnacle of filtering. But do you even know how to run a black box log, bro? So now that Beta Flight 4 official release has been out in the wilds for a few days, maybe a week, a lot of influencers have commented on it and people are now starting to flash it because they were afraid of the, uh, afraid of the release candidates and everything like that. We are starting to see some people that are happy, some people that are not happy and so on and so forth. So I made a video about it. Lots of people have made videos about it, rants and stuff like that. And as far as like how to take a more conservative view and then kind of work your way up. So with this video, hopefully we can start with just a basic thing that everybody should realize and know how to do. So that way you can start working yourself up from those conservative values. Also show you my PIDs that I'm running now and show you that if you apply these methods and you have confidence in your frame noise and stuff like that, what exactly you can do with your PIDs and filters to kind of start pushing that stuff up and getting more performance out of your craft. Without looking at all these squiggly lines on black box and stuff, this is just basic black box noise analysis. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at that. So as you can see here, we have the TBS Source 1, 6S build, low KV, 1750, Hero Session 4, the whole thing weighs out about 740 grams pretty heavy quad so defaults won't be that good on it it will need a little bit of tuning work good smooth props when everything is solid loctited the build is ready to go so it is ready to be flashed or whatever even though it's already been flashed but it's just some things that you should think about before you do that so in your Tyrannus the first thing you're gonna want to do is set up a switch for black box which you can see that I have here and basically what you do is just flip that switch arm your quad, fly around a consistent pattern, you know, do some flips or rolls, whatever. Doesn't have to be that long, a couple minutes just to gather enough data points. Land, disarm, turn that switch off. When you're done, you should see in your OSD that you have a little black box number down here and you will set that up down here in the post flight statistics. I have an actual little thing set up here as well that shows me my log status. So it's real basic stuff guys, to help push the envelope here. The other thing you're going to want to do here in Betaflight is go into CLI and type get space debug and these are your debug modes and you're going to want it to set and then debug mode equals gyro scaled. That's what we just want to look at. We want to look at the raw gyro data. So you're going to put that there, hit save and exit. So now you're back inside, you have, you've done your flight, you have your log and everything like that. So you hook up to beta flight and you go into the black box. First, you know, make sure that you have your logging here uh, set up to uh, about 2k that works the best pretty much with every one that's out there you know there's plasma tree pid toolbox and then there's the normal black box uh, viewer we'll just start with that one because i think even though it doesn't show you all of your noise throughout the whole throttle band it kind of averages stuff it's a little bit simpler for people to use so this should be filled up right here you're just going to save that it's going to make a file you can go ahead and delete it and everything like that and then when you're done, the Betaflight Black Box Explorer, open the log file. You can see here is my log file right here. So I'm not entirely sure what your screen is gonna look like when you first open it up, but when you first open up the log, what you're gonna do is, if you're out flying and you wanna like get logs, multiple logs, you can just keep on flipping and that switch on and off and it'll download one continuous file but then when you get into the logger here you can see that you have individual flight logs that you can actually look at so what we'll do is just click on graph setup remove graph to clean it all up add graph custom graph click down here and like let's scroll all the way down to 
we are going to be looking for debug gyro scaled and click on save changes. So this is your actual raw gyro data and all these lines and stuff might look real bad, but that's pretty much what you're expecting to look like. In a perfect world, these would all be kind of the same width. You can see that this is my roll axis right here. You can see that it's a little bit thicker than my pitch and my yaw, but that's not what we're here to look at. What you want to do is click on this little here thing here, which is going to turn on your spectrograph. And you're going to have your little spectrograph window pop here. So let's make this bigger. So we're looking at the roll axis here and we're going from zero hertz all the way up to a thousand hertz. So this is raw gyro data. So if we go ahead and look at this, we can see that we have some raw noise up here around 600 to like 650 hertz. And then we have this noise hump right here around 200 and some hertz. And we don't really have anything at all. We got this nice hump. Like this is what you basically want to look for. And if we go ahead and stretch this out, you can pretty much see that the max peak here is at 217. And right here is 170 hertz. And then right here would be like around 250 to like 260. And if you click on each axis, you can see that it's going to change a little bit, but all of my noise is relatively right there in that 170 to 250, 260 hertz. And we can make this taller. We can stretch this out like a little bit more, but then you can't see it. So I know that it's okay for my filters to be in 150 to like the 250 range. Now, if this noise was all the way down here and my peak noise was like somewhere here, here, like around 180 to like 170 Hertz, then chances are I would need to go ahead and adjust and use the more conservative type of filtering, which is like, I think 100 to like 300, which would cover all of what I have now, but I don't need it because I don't have noise down here. It only starts really up here. So now if we take a look at it from a filtered standpoint and just click on gyros, you can see that we can click on all of the axes and all those big, big humps are gone. You know, if we turn the noise all the way up, you can see it's all pretty much flat lined out. There's no like large hump or nothing like that. Everything looks pretty good. And all of this noise up here is all pretty much around baseline too. It is a little bit of hump on roll still, which is something that I could take care of. It's probably like a PID thing, but nothing too crazy. So your filtered stuff is always gonna be just like this pretty low now if you have like a big hump like if you're all the way down here as far as your scaling goes and you see like humps and bumps here then you definitely have a problem especially if you have some humps and bumps here after it's been filtered you know that means you really have some problems with frames or just something you know maybe take a look at uh, your motors and make sure that they are all pretty much the same line thickness and you can zoom all the way out to get a, a better look at those make sure there there's not one that's like thicker or crazier than the other and then you can just kind of scroll through the flight but it should be a good enough picture for you so now that i have that good profile of what my noise looks like we can go back into Betaflight and we can adjust our filters appropriately so if we take a look at it here you can see let's look at the gyro first here this is the dynamic brand new dynamic notch that they've got turned on this isn't the rpm or nothing 150 to 670 i got this 670 from Man, multiple videos that I've put on there. This is the max frequency that you can set up to be visible in your OSD 
you can go and set it in your OSD. It's simple. Make sure that you get it and then add like 25 to it so that way you can cover the sidebands of that noise and the notch has enough room to kind of attenuate all that. So remember, we're just lowering noise. We're not getting rid of it altogether. These filters just attenuate stuff. That's why we can't just apply a filter to a super noisy quad because there's still gonna be a lot of leftover noise. Our D-term filters, everything is at stock. I'm not having any problems with them at all. I'm gonna leave everything the way it is from now. If I wanted to, I could probably start tuning those a little bit more aggressive now because we saw that most of my noise starts around 165, 170 hertz. So I can move this number to 170, this number to 170, and this number to 170, do some flights, see how things feel, see how they look. If it's a good change, if I notice something, I can keep on going, I can leave it there. If I'm not really seeing any difference because I'm not hurting anything, or if I want to keep pushing the boundaries, I can start changing these to less aggressive filters as well and try to save even more latency and create a better feeling quad. So it's not that hard. It's really simple. Like, and it's just a basic thing to get done. Like make sure your quad is locked down and get a good picture of what is going on underneath the hood. You know, if you have a vibration in your car and you're driving down the road, I mean, you're going to try to figure out what it is. And how are you going to do that? You're going to like check your tire pressures. You might take the mechanic and have them hook it up to the machine, stuff like that. I mean, this is pretty much the same thing. Like if you have out of balance wheels, you know, you have to put weights on one side to like balance stuff. And that's pretty much like what we're doing here with the filters is we're balancing that all out and making sure that our quad is in tip top shape. We've got the right filters and everything applied to it. And then we can start working on our PIDs. We can start raising them, lowering them, trying all the new and exciting features and everything like that. I hope this is pretty simple and you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. This is something that has been out for years with Betaflight. Some of you guys that have been involved in quads for two, three, four years and do not know how to do this simple process or don't even want to do it, then shame on you. You shouldn't be commenting or giving non-constructive feedback on any groups. For those of you that want to learn how to do this, then I hope this really helped. And please, again, don't hesitate to reach out and ask myself any questions, post on the beta flight groups or anything like that. This is a personal passion of mine to learn more about this stuff and be able to read it and try to break it down in the simplest way as possible. But this is step one of how to how to do it all. Like if you don't understand this, like how to get a log and how to just interpret noise, then we might be in trouble. Next couple of videos, we'll focus on some more of this stuff. Maybe we'll take a look at how this looks in PID Toolbox, which is awesome, and Plasma Tree or something like that. And we'll start talking about some other stuff. So we'll talk to you guys later.